now going to do a run through the techniques that we have trained this weekend weekend and it's all about the first play in 133 namely half shield versus first ward and it includes a technique that's not actually on the very first pages but is shown somewhat later technique number one sees first ward omitting all actions This will very rarely happen in a true fight uh, or in a sparring fight. We show it in a somewhat systematic way so you can understand what's going on. What you will usually see in a sparring fight is uh, half shield acting late rather than not moving at all. So we're going to show this one for the sake of understanding. Understood? So I was acting late so he, while he was observing, while he's watching me, decided that he had closed in so deeply so uh, had bridged so much distance that he could safely strike at me all right okay this is the reason why we show it step by step and uh, the next step that you will see is first ward actually doing something and this will incorporate the or contain the famous falling under the sword of shield ich fange wieder an mit erster hut This overbind is the only means he has to prevent me from thrusting him in the face as was just demonstrated. And this is the overbind that we are going to see now. The reason why there is a shield strike is because I tried not to be stabbed in the face by his overbinding blade. We're going to repeat that very action once more. And this time I'm only falling under sword and shield by not continuing. You see he's overbinding me and he has a line so he can actually thrust me in the face. Usually everybody with a small sense of survival will slightly lift the buckler and thus there will be a shield strike. Mach ich Überbindung? To counter the action that is coming from half shield, namely the overbind. I have to make a decision early on when I'm coming from first ward. So having fallen under sword and shield, I'm in the process of raising my hands. Note that when I fall under sword and shield, my hands are relatively low so that I can lift them. And while I lift them, I try to, well, actually, I can actually show it. And while I lift them, I can try to bring my blade behind his to establish my wedge and next to enter with a thrust. And this lifting of the hands, this elevation, this raising of the hands, this is the moment where I feel that I'm being overbound. And that's when the so-called mutatio gladii comes into play. book it's folded down look in the book this situation where I'm actually dominating him for the sake of your understanding or the uh, for the viewers 
is folded down. This is what it looks like in the book. We think it means this. From here, I separate his weapons and enter. In this separation of the weapons, we think is what is called nuken. Good. If the half shielder is feeling that the one in half sh uh, in first board underarm is doing a mutatio gladii, he can respond with pretty much the same move with a thrust that is doing a durchwex and a cavazione, a rotation uh, around my blade, just as I had uh, rotated or tried to rotate around his blade before. Half shielder feels that the uh, one in first ward who has fallen under leaves the bind and rotates around the overbinding blade. That's when he basically does the same, and the motion is very much the same action that we did earlier for the mutatio gladi, which you have trained. So, this counter, which you have not yet trained, uses the same mechanics. When I'm separating his weapons, there is a short time window and there's a signal that he may be able to use for a wrestling. So once I have separated his weapons and uh, tried to enter, when he has uh, realized this in time, so he actually lifts his hilt, that's when he can do this wrestling. We're going to show it one more time. So he uses my forward impetus. When I'm entering and he had the time to prepare this wrestling, he can actually counter this. And this specific wrestling is described in the book. However, there's also a plate of myself getting out of the wrestling. So when I realize that he's about to wrestle me, I can use my shield to um, neutralize the situation. I strike forward with my shield and pull back my sword. And this situation here with the blade between his arms and my uh, buckler on top, that is also what we see in the book. Okay, here he is about, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> so here he would wrestle me. And when I see it coming, Shield strike and pull back my weapon. In this situation, yeah. So this, if you fold it down, this is what we see in the book. Good. And if I do the mutatio gladi and feel that he has already entered, then it will be difficult to get around um, his shield. So here, it, I'm already stuck, so um, it's hard for me to even get onto his blade, and then I will be screwed. Yeah. So because here, he, apparently, he could just. And I see that I don't have this room. I should do uh, what they call a durchtreten.
Okay, and so you can see that here I'm virtually treading through. So there's a durchtreten. Here. Once again. As you can see, I'm shifting forward and he doesn't have the space to actually go around the blade and come up on the other side, so he does the Durchtreten. That's our current idea of the first play and the techniques that are attached or connected to it. Um, and I hope you find it useful. Thank you very much for your interest. Das lade ich dann bei Zeiten auch hoch, dann habt ihr das auch, dann habt ihr quasi eine Zusammenfassung von den Techniken und noch einen Ausblick auf das, was weitergeht.